yeah, I just, I would not recommend this book. Don't read it. Don't even look at it. Just, just get rid of it. If it's on your shelf and you haven't read it, just throw it in a dumpster or a fire, please. Thank you. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my last wrap up for January 2022. I read a total of 15 books this month so I did split it up into three parts. If you're interested in the other 10 books I read this month I will leave those wrap ups down below. But without further ado let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is This Train is Being Held by Ismay Williams. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Issa and Alex who meet one day on a subway train. They are instantly drawn to one another regardless of their differences. Issa is a half Cuban dancer who lives on the rich side of town who is also dealing with some family issues that may change her world completely. Alex is a Dominican American who has the talent to become a pro baseball player like his father wants but his heart is set on becoming a poet. Over the course of three years their relationship develops and grows and changes as they try to navigate their differing worlds. The story is told in alternating perspectives between Issa and Alex and I did enjoy both of their points of views but their relationship developed so slowly obviously because it's over three years in this book but their communication skills are so lacking so many of the issues that their relationship faced could have been easily avoided if they had just communicated with one another so it was very frustrating as a reader to know that that would have solved problems but they were just so stubborn that they wouldn't freaking talk to each other. I do think that I was more invested in the side plots that they were both leading individually rather than their romance. I think that mental illness was portrayed very well in this story through Issa's brother Merritt as well as her mother's depression. There was also a lot of discussions about social class, racism, as well as police brutality that I think were handled very well. I did enjoy this as I read it, but I don't think that it will be anything particularly memorable for me, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Black Coats by Colleen Oakes and I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I was thoroughly surprised at this book. After the murder of her cousin Natalie, Thea Solomon is grieving, especially because the killer was never brought to justice. She receives a letter to join the Black Coats, which is a secret organization that have been executing balancings against people who harm women. Tia ends up becoming the leader for Team Banter, a group of four other girls who are eventually going to exact these vigilante missions on people. As they go on more of these missions, they earn their inheritances, which are missions that they go on that will allow them to exact their vengeance on the people who hurt them or their loved ones in the past and it's like the story of that. I had pretty low expectations going into this. I hadn't heard anybody really talk about it but I was pleasantly surprised. You definitely do need to put reality to the side because this would never happen in real life but it was just a lot of fun to read about. I could not put this book down. I read it in one sitting because it is just so addictive. The writing is very basic don't expect anything over the top incredible but it flowed really nicely and it was a very easy read. I think that the pacing was really well done. It never felt too fast or too slow. I also really enjoyed Tia as a main character. I think it was really interesting to get to know her as the story progressed and I really loved the battle that she was having inside of herself about whether there was a line to cross. When it comes to vengeance and justice, I think that it was a really good conversation. I also just really enjoyed Team Banner as a whole. I think that every girl on the team was so unique and had such an interesting backstory that I really liked learning about as the story went on. I also just really enjoyed the relationships that developed between these girls while they were in the black coats. The biggest complaint I do have is the romance between Tia and Drew. I just didn't care. There was no point to it. Like I get why it was included and like you know but just no chemistry. Just bland. 
bland. But I ended up giving it 4.5 out of 5 stars because it was just so much fun. Next up, I have When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is a gender bent Mamma Mia. This follows Millie, who has big dreams of becoming a Broadway star. She has been raised by her single father for as long as she can remember. Then one day, while perusing her father's computer, she discovers his live journal from 2003, and she decides that she is going to go searching for her mother. I was initially really excited for this book because I absolutely adored Tweet Cute by this author, so I was hoping that it was going to be something similar to that. It wasn't, but it was still cute. Like I said, this is a retelling of Mamma Mia. It features a enemies to lovers romance. I liked Millie and her extroverted personality for the most part, but at times she definitely got on my nerves. Her best friend Teddy was a sweetheart. I really enjoyed his character. He was probably one of my favorites other than Millie's aunt Heather and Chloe. All three were just so supportive of Millie and her endeavors. I think that they were really great additions to the story. I will say that I definitely enjoyed Teddy and Millie's platonic relationship more than Millie's relationship with Oliver. Oliver really bugged me at the beginning, but he did definitely grow on me as the story progressed. I did really enjoy the banter that they had with each other, and I did like how their relationship growed as the story progressed. I also liked the side plot of the internship and how that allowed for the enemies to lovers trope to come into play. I think it was really well done. It was a lot of fun getting to know all three of the candidates that Millie thought could be her mom. I will say that my biggest disappointment was that I was able to call exactly who her mom was as soon as they were introduced, which ended up being a huge disappointment to me. But overall, it was a lot of fun and I ended up giving it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is a book that I I absolutely hated. It is blessed by, I don't even know, Tanya Hurley. I gave this a 1 out of 5 stars. It was not good. This follows Cecilia, Agnes, and Lucy who meet a boy named Sebastian in the hospital one night. Sebastian ends up giving all three of these girls matching bracelets and one night during a storm they all have this urge to go to a church. Upon arriving they see Sebastian and he is claiming that he is a saint wanting to help them discover the powers that they have within and it's that story. Um, I absolutely hated the story, as I said. I probably should have DNF'd it as soon as I picked it up, but I was determined that it was going to get better. I, I had faith and I should not have. Honestly, I don't even really know what I read. I could not tell you a single plot point in this book. All I know is that it was so boring. I didn't care about any of the characters. Lucy, Cecilia, and Agnes were all terrible human beings. They were all just so boring, unlikable, one-dimensional. They had no character development whatsoever. Not to mention the amount of offensive lines that were in this book. For example, there was a time when they were at the psychiatric hospital and one of the nurses said that the mental floor was at the top because it would save money for the hospital as a whole because all of the crazy people would just end up jumping and killing themselves. And it was never like explained that like this is not a thing that should be said. Like it was just like a joke and I was like, oh, so that's, that's how we're gonna be in this book. And it was just a lot of that. There was also just a lot of slut shaming and victim blaming and I just could not get behind it because it was never explained that that was like a wrong take to have. Like it was just like, yeah, she's a slut so she got raped so. She probably shouldn't dress with short skirts and then she wouldn't be raped. Like, it was just like, <laughs> mm. Yeah, I just, I would not recommend this book. Don't read it. Don't even look at it. Just, just get rid of it. If it's on your shelf and you haven't read it, just throw it in a dumpster or a fire, please. Thank you. And then the final book I have, I gave four out of five stars, and it is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. This follows Sophia, who lives in a society where Cinderella was worshipped when she was alive, but she has been dead for nearly 200 years. Today's society is run by a king who hosts a ball every year where all eligible teenage girls must attend in the hopes of being picked by a man to be wed. And if you do not attend or 
are not picked after three runs, then you ultimately disappear. Nobody really knows what happens to these girls. Sophia does not want a Prince Charming. She wants to marry her best friend, Aaron. But Aaron wants to make her family proud and be picked by a respectable man. On the night of the ball, Sophia escapes and she runs to Cinderella's tomb where she meets Constance, who is the last known descendant of Cinderella and her stepsisters, and she also wants to take down the patriarchy, and it's like the story of them doing that. I like that this book took a much darker twist to the Cinderella tale. It is definitely a very loose retelling. I think that the world was interesting and I did like learning more about it as the story progressed, but I didn't really understand how the world got that bad. I didn't really feel like there was a reason why. Like I felt like somebody would have rebelled at some point during the time because it was just so oppressive to women and I didn't understand how literally nobody had said anything until Sophia. Sophia was an interesting enough character, but I was a bit confused because she never really had a plan on how she was going to take down the king. She just kind of like went into things blind and hoped for the best and I was like, mm, girl, maybe this is not the best idea, but she never really stopped to think about anything. She was just like, kill the king! take down the patriarchy and I don't have a plan. My favorite character was definitely the fairy godmother. I think that the author took a very cool twist to her character and I think it was really well done. The biggest complaint I do have is the romance because it is so insta-love. The first half of the book it just goes on and on and on about how much Sophia loves Aaron and would do anything for Aaron and then as soon as she sees Constance it's like Aaron who? I don't know an Aaron. I only see this fiery redhead and that's it. That is, that is all I care about now. And it just like didn't make sense. I also just wanted more of Luke. I think that he could have been such a huge part of the story. He was definitely one of my favorite characters, but he is in such a small chunk of the book, which was really disappointing because his character could have been utilized for so much more than what it was. Overall, it was a fun read, which is why I gave it four out of five stars. You definitely have to put aside, you know, your want for world building or a why, but I mean like it was fun, so four out of five stars. All right, everybody, so those were the last five books that I read for the month of January 2022. I will leave the other two wrap-ups down below if you're interested in the other 10 books, but let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!